Hi, welcome to SBR Forum Videos. I'm Peter Loshek. We are doing our usual a preview of UFC with Nick Kalikas, an MMA odds maker and consultant for DSI Sportsbook. Nick, thanks so much for doing this. Thanks for having me. This is UFC 147, and we are also going to be joined by Matt Manzella of CageReligion.com and host of Cage Religion Radio. Matt, thanks for being here. Hey, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. All right, great. We have uh, Vandalay Silva and Rich Franklin. That's not really a marquee matchup, is it? Well, it's a matchup that they uh, obviously just kind of scrambled to put together last right, minute because right. Vitor Belfort went out. And it's still a matchup between two legends of the sport that I think they think will sell well over in Brazil, at least. Yeah. For the Brazilian fans, it gives them a main event that they can recognize or at least... Um, something to look forward to. It's, it's a decent replacement for them. Maybe for the American fans, they're disappointed, honestly. Right. I don't think they, uh, they wanted something a little bit better. So, so do you think that the betting action will be, the handle will be a little bit down for this one or? Yeah, it's not going to be. I think overall this event's not getting a lot of pub. Right. Um, and it's a shame because, you know, from top to bottom, a lot of these Brazilians are getting a shot on this card. A lot of them are headlining a card, which I not necessarily normally would. So I think it's, you know, they deserve their time to shine, I yeah, think, as well. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, I'm excited for it because Vandalay Silva is the axe murderer. Do you know that? <laughs> of course, man. Back in the day. I don't know if he's yeah. as much these days. Oh, but, I, he uh, still is. Well, we'll see. He we'll will see. murder some with an axe. <laughs> right. Let's talk about this fight. Matt Manzella, what do you think? Do you think that, uh, you know, this is a rematch, right? And, of course, Franklin won the first one. And since that rematch, uh, they've both been a little bit iffy, right? One and two, two and one. They've, they have a combined record of three and three. Matt Manzella, do you think that uh, Vandalay Silva will be able to uh, murder Rich Franklin with an axe figuratively? Uh, you know what, uh, people are going to crucify me for saying this, but when Vanderlei fights these days, well, you know, we all kind of collectively hold our breath. Not only does he win violently, but he also loses violently, right. uh, as we saw against Chris Lieben last summer. A lot of people thought uh, Kung Lee would give Vanderlei trouble last November, but he looked impressive, pull off the vintage knockout. Uh, Rich, like you mentioned, coming off a 16-month layoff, and he's got his work cut out for him. I mean, he hasn't had any easy fights. Uh, I don't think Vandalay will be an easy fight. I'm going to go out on the limb. I think, uh, I think Vandalay might pull off the, uh, the upset. Yeah, I mean, he's actually plus 160 are the lines, are the odds that uh, I'm seeing now. Nick, where'd you open this one? I opened it at minus 200, actually, but uh, Vandalay did open the slight favor to some spots around Pickham, and then uh, public action betted up a little bit, hmm. and my spot was around 2-1. to one. I just think that these days, this is the thing. They're both actually on the decline of their career. I mean, there's no question right. about it. They're, it's not the same uh, Rich Franklin we're going to see, and as right. Matt mentioned, 16 months, a long time to be off. Yeah. And it's obviously not the same Vandalay Silva. Right. Um, so you're getting two fighters that there's not much left in them, but I think Rich Franklin has a little bit more left in the tank. You think so? He, yeah, he's an intelligent fighter. I think he should be the rightful favorite. This is not a fight that you should go crazy in bet, but if you got right, this right. at a pick'em price, I think that's a steal because I think Rich Franklin is definitely worth the bet around pick'em. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're getting close to 2-1, to one, I think it, it's maybe a stay away point. Um, we, we might see the line drop a little bit. Uh, Vandalay Silva always gets a little respect. Although we should mention in his last fight against Kung Lee, public was all over Kung Lee. No respect for Vandalay Silva. Really? Oh, none at all. Wow. So, I mean, it, well, it's, a lot of it's due to the chin, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Vandalay's right. chin has been hor right, horrific. Right. So, I think um, probably Rich Frank could take advantage of that again. I think out of the two, they both have suspect chins, let's face it. <laughs> but uh, I think Rich probably has the IQ and the mindset to probably survive a little bit longer. So right, I think right. Rich Franklin's going to win this fight. So are you, are you purposely trying to need Rich Franklin in this one? Yeah, we are going to. Yeah. And again, it's not going to be a huge decision because it'd be stupid of me to, at this stage, even trust a, you know, either one of these guys too much. Right. But I do think Rich Franklin was aside. So we're going to need them a little bit more, yeah. All right, Matt Manzella, if Vandalay Silva does pull out uh, a win here, how do you think it'll happen? You know, I think it's going to be a violent knockout, uh, kind of how we saw Vitor Valfour put put uh, Rich Franklin out. Um, as Nick touched on, you know, Vandalay's chin has really diminished in, in the last few years. Uh, but I just have a weird hunch about this fight. Really can't pinpoint why, but I just have a weird hunch about Vandalay pulling off the upset. Well, it is in Brazil, too. And you know, yeah. he, he wants to prove to the fans out there that he's still got something left. So right, right. the cards are stacked against Franklin a little bit. You know, he's going to have to take the trip. He's the visitor. He's going to have a little bit of uh, pressure on him as well. And sometimes Franklin doesn't perform. as he, Mentally, he's not there, but most of the time he is. I yeah. think that's one thing that's helped him in his career is his fight IQ. So I think Franklin will be ready. Okay, well, let's move on to uh, the next fight. Fabricio Verdum is a minus 500 favorite. Let's start with Nick. Where, where'd you open this line? And are you getting a lot of action on this? Well, well, no, we're not getting a lot of action, so the right, line's been fine. holding yes. steady, yeah. yeah. You know, and I think 5-1 to one's good. Russo's on a little bit of a roll here, but um, in this particular matchup, I know that uh, for Beast of Verdum, if he does get put on his back, which Russo's the grinder wrestler, you know, right. he's a tough guy, um, and you have to respect what he's accomplished, you know. Him being undefeated in the UFC, I think, is, says a lot for sure. him, you know, because yeah. he's a little bit... 
maybe the public doesn't overrate him at this point, but I think he's maybe not as good as his record indicates. And Fabrice Verdum is probably going to sub him out here. Matt Manzella, would you take Verdum at minus 500? You know what? It's hard to get a, a, to bet against Fabrice Verdum. Honestly, I hope to see a Verdum match with a higher profile opponent, you know, after his recent win over Roy Nelson. But mm-hmm. the truth of the matter is, like Nick, like Nick touched on, Russo's unbeaten in the UFC. And, you know, he doesn't really always get the credit he deserves. Now, you want to talk about winning streaks, he's on an 11-fight 11, 11 win streak, 4-0 in the UFC, he hasn't lost since 2007. And, you know, more than half his ways are by, more than half his wins, I should say, are by submission. But you're simply not going to submit a guy like Verdum. You know, argu- arguably the, the best heavyweight grappler in MMA. You know, not to mention his stand-up has improved tremendously since his time at King's MMA. Right. Striking looked good against uh, Overeem last June, looked even better against Roy Nelson earlier this year. So... I see Verdun taking a pretty lopsided decision from Russell in the end. So maybe we can uh, reduce the odds somehow by betting a prop or something. You think that that might have some value, Matt? Uh, that, you know what? That's a good question. Uh, a lot of people think Verdun's going to submit Russell. I, I, I see this one going all three rounds. So, uh, Nick, there's not much else to say about it. It's probably going to be a relatively low bet. Yeah, I mean, it could, like you said, if you're getting a decent plus money price on uh, Verdun by submission, I think it might be worth a bet, or by decision as well, um, it might be worth, you know, it depends on, I guess it's your choice, really, either one. Like Matt said, he prefers, he thinks it's going to go by decision, so if you're leaning that way, bet by decision. If you're leaning towards sub, then bet by sub. Other than that, do not lay five to one. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, that's That's how it is, yeah. Makes sense to me.